Imagine you leave for the weekend and you put your teenager in charge of your house while you're gone. And you have a nice trip and you come back a few days later and you enter the house and you see the garbage is full. You open the refrigerator, there's food missing. You look in the living room, there's clutter sitting all over the place. And what's happened is a teenager has changed the state of your house. It went from a, maybe a cleaner house to a dirtier house, but the idea is that uh, the house has been changed. And the reason I have this example is, is um, the teenager represents a function and your house represents your CPU. And when a function runs, it's like the teenager is in charge of the house and you're not there. And what the function can do, like the teenager can do, is change the, the state of the house. And that's what functions do. They change the state of the CPU. And the state of the CPU is typically the, the contents of the registers. Uh, so, well, why this example? Well, the idea that a function returns a value is just an illusion. What functions really do is they change the state of the CPU. They change values of registers. And to, to make this illusion work that a function returns something is what programs, compilers typically do is they, they put a value into the RAX register and then after the function returns you take the value out of the RAX register and you put it into a variable in memory and it gives you the warm fuzzy feeling that the function returned a value. Even, but what it's really doing is changing the state of the CPU. I had this thought the other day that on a function that a, returns a boolean value, it actually writes either zero or a non-zero value into the REX register and zero being false, non-zero being, being true, and then the parent program will then uh, examine the RX register and then do uh, actions based on that, usually a, a jump of some sort. Um, so it, it dawned on me that this is kind of extra. These are extra steps. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could just have a function that, I, I can't say it returns anything, because it, it just basically returns itself and gives the CPU back to the parent, and the parent can just look at the flags register and, and jump accordingly. And the flags register is kind of the heart of all the jumps of how CPUs work. Let's just, let's just write an example up here. Let's, let's get started here. This video is going to be long if I keep rambling. I'm going to make a function called compare. It's going to compare two 8-byte variables. I like 8-byte variables. I get to use full-size registers for them. A and B. All this function is going to do is issue the compare instruction. A comma B. So what the compare instruction is it's actually a subtraction, A minus B, where the answer isn't written anywhere. Uh, instead, well, since it's a, a mathematical operation, the flags register will be altered that gives the result of the answer, whether it be equal to zero, not equal to zero, greater than zero, uh, the bits are set accordingly. So the fu this function doesn't return anything in the RAX register. It's going to attempt to return the state of the flags register. This is what I'm looking for here. Uh, so I'm going to make, in my main entry point here, I'm going to make the variables A and B. And I'm going to invoke the compare function a comma B. Let's set A equal to 1, B equal to 2, and uh, 
bro. Let's not, let's just do that. Let's just do that. Let's see. Let's take a look in the debugger and see what we got. Okay, here we are in the debugger. There's our console window. I'm going to drag that off. And we're going to go into our main entry point. We're going to set up A and B as 1 and 2. And here's the call. Let me go up here. So RCX is 1, RDX is 2. There's our two parameters. We're going to go into the call. Our function is very small, very simple. Uh, compare RCX comma RDX, which is one comma two. Once you look at the R flags down here at the bottom, that's what's going to change when this runs. You can see that it's red now. It says 297. Uh, SF is one of the bits that I use a lot. The sign flag. Uh, this is bit seven for a two's complement. Uh, one means it's set high, which means it's a negative number. One minus two is a negative number. Zero flag is set low, which means it's not zero. There's the state of our sign of our flags register, and we return, and we're out of the function and. We could use that for a jump. It, it, it's literally return the state. Now, this didn't quite work so well uh, before the video. Um, this, now, this is a real simple function that doesn't, doesn't show the problem I ran into exactly in this function. But you can see we're going to leave the function main that the I've got this LEA RSP RSP plus 10. That's changed. Earlier today that was add RSP comma 10. And when you when you execute an add it changes the flags register. And that that's what stopped me from being able to do this these to to make this work. So I decided to try to rewrite this instruction to be a load effective address RSP plus 10 which essentially is does the exact same thing but it's a different instruction and it doesn't change the, the flags register. So that's that's a compiler modification I had to do to, to make this example work today. Uh, we're going to finish the program here and we're going to continue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this a little bit so that we have something a, we could, something a little more beefier that we can look at. I'm going to take off the uh, pre-initialized values. I'm going to invoke console.code. I have this function called get numeric input. And I can just ask a question like, give me a value for A. Now that is going to return the REX register, so we have to move into the A variable, the value of the REX register. And I'm going to do another get numeric input, B. So tell me what you want for B. This, this will be a way for, to let us uh, manually input these numbers. Of course, I have to move into B to value of the RX register because that's the way we do it. Now I'm going to run that function. Now, normally, when you come out of the compare, you'd have to um, use a value in RX because that's what functions do. They return the value in Rx. But this one doesn't return anything in Rx. It just simply changes the flags register. So at this point, um, like normally you'd have to do a compare Rx comma you know, 0. And 
and see if it's zero or not. And then you'd have to compare. Um, if you want to see it's greater than or equal to, you have to do different comparisons, and then you can do jumps accordingly. But since we're we didn't destroy our flags register because we've fixed the RSP add to an LEA, we can use the R the flags register directly. So what we've we're kind of returning, I hate to say we're returning the flags register from the function. It, it, it's more like the flag, the function altered the state of the CPU or altered the flags register within the CPU. And we're just going to use that. So what I want to do is I want to say jump equal to. So down here is my else which is where the equal to will jump to. I know it seems a little backwards, that's how assembly works. And I'm just gonna write equals, I'll keep it real simple. Here, our flags register is still not affected at this point, so we can actually do a jump greater than, which down here that would be in the console. Greater than. So in here it would be it's not equal to and it's not greater than. make that into a loop to go repetitively. So take the top of my loop up here. Whoops. So I indent everything. Indentions matter. This else matches this JE, they have to be on the same indention. This JG matches this else, same indention. All these indentions matter because the jumps are calculated according to the indentions. So here's the bottom of our loop where we're going to... Let's just... Uh, we would figure out how to exit the loop. How about if I just enter A is 0? That'll be a loop exit. So jump not equal. If A is non-zero, it's always going to jump, and the jump will be an up jump all the way up to this line to restart the loop. Let's give that a shot. All right. That's good. You know what? I'm going to take a chance and just run this right away. A, 1, B, 2, less than, so 1 is less than 2, A, 3, B, 1, greater than, A is greater than 1, A, 5, B, 5, equal to, okay, there's our three different states, A, 0, B, anything, Press enter. Okay, there's a program. What's nice about that is that it's kind of simple. I, I kind of like it. Um, it's less lines of code. You just think of every Boolean function you've ever had that returns. You have to then do a compare after the function returns. Wouldn't it be nice if the function, instead of returning a value in the REX register, it just set the flags register to a state and you're ready for your conditional jumps right after the function returns. So these, these two lines right here is kind of unheard of. You, you don't get a do a conditional jump right after a function call. You have to do a, a compare in between there and compare 
REX with something. That's that's the whole idea of this whole video, is that you're... I keep, I, I, I'm trying to not say you return the flags register, because it's not returned. It's, it's just set. The function doesn't return anything. It just changes the state of the CPU, because it's code that's borrowing the CPU for a while, changing things in it, and then when it gives you your control back, you just notice things are different. Registers are changed, the flags registers change, this function uh, sets you up to do jumps right after it's done. I like it. Uh, the, the question comes to, to mind though is that, okay, that's great, great concept and everything, but when you changed the RSP from an add to an LEA, is that slower? Than, is an LEA slower than an add? You know, so you're you're gaining in one area, but are you losing another? And that's that's kind of the question I had too, um, because all of my ads, uh, you know, are now LEAs. Now this function doesn't have. Let's see. In order to make this function to have I need to have an add. I need to make a local variable called sum local variable. Now, when this variable is created, it's going to be created on the stack, and that's going to generate some add code before the return. Yeah, let's go take a look at it. Why not? Okay, I'm in the debugger. I've already gotten to the point where I've entered one for A and two for B, and we're at a point where we're going to do our compare function. Let's go into that. This is a now this has a local variable, so because it has a local variable, there's going to be a little bit a little bit overhead more than before. I see that the stack gets ten subtracted from it. Now that subtraction affected the flags, but that's at the beginning of the function, so that, that's okay. Uh, here we put zero under the address for the variable that's initialized. Here's our one line of code. We compare one and two. There's our flags register being, being changed for the comparison, and now we're at the point where we don't want our function overhead to destroy our flags register, but our stack it's been is 10 off from where the return value is, so we need to adjust the, st the stack. And this is where the new code is. Instead of an add RSP, it's an LEA RSP plus 10. Boom! You see the stack is fixed, and you see the flags register is unaffected because it's an LEA. We return from the function, and we can go directly into a jump. We didn't have to move a value into REX, pull a value out of REX, do a comparison. All those instructions aren't existing. We go directly to jump, and it's, I, again, I kind of like it. Uh, it's less than 0, 0 equal press enter. Okay, let's go back, because we need, we got more to do here. The question I want to address now is, is LEA addition slower than regular addition? So I've done some off video coding here to make this quicker. I've commented out our main entry point, and instead we're going to enter in this function called add versus LEA. Down here is add versus LEA. Number of iterations, big hex number. Testing add versus LEA. CPU CPU timer. CPU timer is just in a uh, runtime module that I have that helps. That I've it's actually kind of new, so I don't know how reliable it is, but um, I've used it a few times. Uh, start the clock. Run a function called do the adds. Stop the clock. Get the difference between the start and stop time. Uh, echo it to screen. Do another test. Start the clock, do the LEA, stop the clock, get the difference from the start and the stop time, 
go to screen. Okay, here's the do the ads. It's a loop that goes number of iterations. Uh, now in here, binary write 1,4903C2. So 4903C2 is the machine codes for add rex comma r10. Count will be the register r10. It's a three byte machine code that's going to get repeated a thousand times. So this loop will run, has a thousand lines of code in it. And, and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to, I don't want to test loop overhead. I want to test instruction and I'm trying to minimize the loop overhead. Here's do LEAs, LEAs. It's the same, same loop, same iterations, different instruction. Notice, and here's the machine code for, for this line, load effective address, and count is again R10. Notice that the machine code is one byte larger. So the LEA is one byte larger. That's, does that mean it's slower? I don't know. One thing I notice is, is that you can't predict it. Um, let's go in and check this out. Okay, let's open this up. I should have had it preset here. Let's go in here. Let's open our console window. Let's drag it out. Here's our test. We just wrote our first line. Testing add versus LEA. Alright, I'm gonna... I don't want to start the timer because that's going to screw up the test. I just kind of want to show, I'll scroll down here. So there's our function for testing the ad. There's our thousand lines of binary writes. You see that 4903C2 repeated over and over and over again. Add rex come r10. So that's the loop that's going to have a thousand lines of code in the loop that runs a huge number of iterations and since it's microseconds and add is the fastest instruction we need to do it a lot to get a measurable time. I'm going to have to start page down because okay it wasn't too far away. So this is the second, this is the LEAs you can see this is repeated. Ah. Page down your cursor doesn't move. Um, there's the same thing it's four bytes. It's different instruction. There's the test. Let's run at full speed. I didn't have the screen there. You could see that it was just a blink. It happened instantaneously almost. Uh, I see that add looks like it took longer than LEA. And there's my there's my example exactly. You can't predict it. Uh, let's let's go back a second. Okay, I came back here so I can run this kind of a few more times. See what we're getting. Uh, there's add a little bit slower than LEA. Again, let's run it again. There's add a little faster than LEA. There's LEA a little faster than add. So it's to me it's it's I I call it a tie. It just seems so close. Being that it's so close, sometimes faster, sometimes slower, I'm just gonna leave it, leave the compiler as is, because LEA seems to be the same as had. And what it does, it gives me the opportunity to where the function overhead does not erase the flags register and I if I choose to I may start writing functions that return the flags register I, I, I can't say return but I can use the flags register directly after a function call um, it seems like a good idea but it's gonna have to survive the test of time and I already have a ton of runtime DLL functions that are returning RAX values um, so it'll, 
I'm not going to go back and change everything just because of this idea. But uh, it's there. Um, I can use it. I may start using it. Um, see how much, another year, see if I still like it or not. I don't know. It, it's just a, something that popped in my head that why this could be done. And I just showed that it can be done. And I'm going to start doing it and maybe I'll like it because it's it's going to save a few instructions here and there on, on all these function calls and, and you know all that we know at, can add up to a performance. That's all I have. Thanks for watching at the end. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it uh, gives you ideas of what you can and may do or want to do and uh, just shows you that just because things are done the way they're, they've always been done doesn't mean they have to be done that way from this day forward. See ya.